and hello ladies and gentlemen boys and girls children of all ages and I'm back to you again and something and yes let's address the hair that can't go without notice so guys I am so sorry that there's a dead skunk on my head please continue a movie called Peepin' Tom so I watched Peep and Tom and looked into it. And that's what I'm going over today, guys. And it's actually, if you like anything Hitchcockian, like Rear Winder, or they call it the Britain Psycho. Come out May 16, 1960. And this is a couple months before Psycho. See, this movie bombed at the box office. Actually, it was on for, a, they let it be on there for a week because it actually showed a little bit of nudity, believe it or not. I think it showed like one breast or something like that. That is all, it's 1960s, so that was, you know, bad. So, it's directed by Michael Powell. And it stars uh, Carl Bunn. There's, just check out the documentary, A Very British Psycho. It's on YouTube, you can check it out, it's pretty cool. But, that movie, Peepin' Tom, and it was based off an unproduced film of Hitchcock's called The Blind Man. And it was about a blind piano, a pianist that received the eyes of a murdered victim, but but the retinas retained the image of the murderer. I mean, you got the lodger in 44 and stuff, but in my opinion, I would have to honestly say, Psycho got the most praise, but this is technically probably the first slasher movie. Hitchcock seen how it done so bad in England and Britain, he wouldn't release hit Psycho there, so he released Psycho over in the States. And first horror movie ever to give you, give the audience a POV of the killer, of course. And to have the woman as the main hero, too, as a first. And the, the first uh, horror movie trope of sex and sin, and that gets you killed. Anyway, it, here, here's what it boils down to. It involves uh, around a serial killer who murders women, okay, while using a portable movie camera to record his killings because he likes to see the terror in their face. That's his real movie. Mark Lewis meets Dora. A prostitute <clears throat> and he uh, films her with a hidden camera under his coat follows the woman into her house murders her later watches the movie in his den and credits roll on the screen just like it's a regular movie Lewis Mark Lewis he works as a member of a film crew but he wants to be a of course a filmmaker himself he also works part-time as a photographer for soft porn, like pin-up pictures and stuff like that. He says, you know, sells under the counter. Helen, uh, she just a sweet-natured young woman who lived with her blind mother in the flat below him. She befriends Mark out of courtesy, and after he's been discovered spying on her and on her twenty and on her twenty-first birthday, no doubt, Mark reveals to Helen. Uh, through home movies taken by his father as a child. Mark's dad was using his son as a guinea pig. His Mark's dad, his father, was a psychological expert on fear and, nerv and the nervous system. So what he done is Mark's father would study him even going as far as recording his son's reactions as he sat with his mother on the deathbed just to get the reaction. He also, he kept his son under constant surveillance 24-7. He wore all the rooms to know where he was at at all times just to be doing it. Well, Mark can't, you know, you see now why he about turned out the way he did. Mark gets Vivian, this woman, to stand in in the studio picture and then he kills her and stuffs her in a trunk. The law interviews everybody, including Mark, but Mark brings his damn camera with him, and he leaves it recording. They ask what for. He says he's making a documentary. This is very important, too. It's spoilers, by the way, of course. Uh, well, Helen gets Mark to go to dinner with her. She even gets him to leave his camera behind. While that happened to her blind mother, Miss Stevens, she goes over, and she knows Mark is he's messed up, and he's, uh, you know... 
through the winter at Helen. So she waits on Mark to get back to his flight, and she threatens him that she's going to move and everything, you know, to stop filming her or whatever he's doing. And he assures her he ain't going to do it. And he could have he could have killed her. Law tells Mark <clears throat> uh, to uh, this uh, model's place named her name nude scene ever in Britain film. And Millie, the <laughs> slightly later it emerges that Mark actually killed Millie in the movie before returning home. Well, Helen comes back and she comes into Mark's studio or house, or whatever, and she sees that film and he, she knows he's trying to make a documentary, so. She starts watching it. Bad mistake. With as the fear's grown on her face, Mark walks in. Well, he's got a tripod. It shoots at this little, or it don't shoot at it. it. It's got a blade in it, a knife. He can get like a knife in it. That's what he's been killing the women with. And he's gonna kill. He's gonna kill Helen, but he don't. He stops. And all of a sudden, the police show up. And now he's cornered. But Mark has planned for this from the beginning, believe it or not. This, So what Mark does, he impels himself on that tripod with that knife with the camera running. He's providing the final death to his documentary. And the last shot shows Helen crying over Mark's dead body as a place enter the room. Anyway, gotta go. I know you can dig the hire.